All right, welcome back. We continue live right here at Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani and Tim Benz with you, and we will take your calls. We'll also talk a little bit about the Steelers and some of the things they're going to be facing over the next uh, couple of weeks here as they move into a new uh, calendar year for them in 2020. Right now, let's go out to Mike in Ross Township who wants to talk some Penguin hockey. Hello, Mike. How are you? Hey, Bob. How you doing, Tim? Good, thanks. Hi. Hey, uh, I agree with you about uh, rotating goaltenders. I've never seen that before. I mean, they got to make a move one way or the other. I mean, you got to build some momentum. I know, they're, but I mean, it's not the goaltender's fault because if you don't score, you can't win. But also, the Penguins seem uh, a couple steps slower than they were earlier in the year. I don't know if it's because of the fourth line. They've only played them, you know, what, four or five minutes a game. And uh, the only one I notice on the ice is Malkin and Hornquist, you know, in front of the net. Even Crosby seemed to slow down. He's not going to the corners and battling the way he first did when he first came back when he scored about mm. four goals in five games. Well, there's, there's a lot there. Let me start with Thanks, the goaltenders Mark. first, all right? Um, well, if you haven't seen the goaltenders rotate, did you see the Islanders last year? The Islanders did it quite effectively up until the playoffs, and they went with one guy and stuck with him. And if the Penguins are still fortunate enough to get to the playoffs, then perhaps that's the time to do it. As I said before, you know, you have to figure out which one is worth sticking with, though, and neither one has given them that opportunity. And for as poor as the defense has been in front of them, I don't think the goaltenders have exactly bathed themselves in glory against a couple of teams, at least the last six, where we've seen four of, was it four of which probably won't make the playoffs? Yeah. Uh, I know the three out west won't, and then, like, Buffalo. Buffalo and yeah, the so, three out west. Right, so, and those goalies, none of them are, I don't say none of them, a lot of them aren't better, or haven't had better seasons no. than those two. But in those games, they outperformed the Penguins goalie every night, six nights in a row. At some point, one of them just has to pitch a shutout or win two to one. I think Mike Sullivan made a good point, though, today. When you don't score and you get too fancy sometimes for your own good, he was talking about getting back to base and just putting the puck on the net, which they seem to get away from, especially on the power play. And when you have an opportunity on the power play, especially two men if you have it, you don't want to mess around with perimeter passing. But, but when you don't score, you put an extra burden on your defense. Therefore, every mistake is magnified, like the Evander Kane play the other night. I mean, it was just wide open space for him up the middle, a turnover, again, at the blue line, when you're not in position to cover up in case the other team intercepts the play, which they did. Kane goes in all alone, scores. Those things become magnified when you don't score enough. And power play is going to be critical for the Penguins as they move into the playoffs. It's got to get better than it is. It's too sporadic. Right. And the power play has been a struggle. The penalty kill has been a struggle. Power play, I believe, was one for 18 during the six-game stretch. And the penalty kill in those six games allowed five goals. Now, uh, is it the design? Is it the coaching I don't think so I think it's good players playing poorly on the power play and it's guys who are paid largely to kill penalties and stop pucks on the penalty kill and the goaltenders not getting the job done I'm not going to put that on the coaches I think the special teams are on the players all right we have some uh, tweets here to Sean Kramer uh, Tim hits us both up and says I see the Penguins going as Sid goes production down just a hair over the last few games but I'm not worried about him well more than he just a start hair yeah, more than just a hair. The whole team's been down a lot, and that's what happens. He's got one goal in the six games, and I believe he's a minus seven over that stretch. Too. Right. And Jeremy Hillman says it would behoove the Penguins to score first against the Senators as the opposition has struck first in all six games during the losing streak. Well, that would help. And if you fall behind, you know, natives here can get a little restless if things start getting shaggy again, just like they did in that Buffalo game. We'll see. Back to the lines we go. We have Billy in South Fayette joins us right now. Hello, Billy. Welcome to the Sports Call. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, okay, Billy. I called, and I just had a question. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Penguins seem to have the same problem the last time they went to the West Coast, and they played against those teams, and this time they didn't win this time. Actually, okay. they've been pretty good against the Western the Conference traveling. teams in recent they've, years. They've owned the Western Conference by and large, yes. They ran into some teams right now that I think are, are capable if they play the way they're going to play. Uh, L.A. is not having a good year at all, but they, you know, they've won some impressive games. Uh, but you still have no, to. I, I don't know. I'm not going to let them off. That, that schedule to me. I understand, but I mean, they also they beat some good teams, L.A. I feel um, like the equivalent of what happened to the Penguins would be like if the Steelers lost to the Bengals, Browns, and Bengals in three straight weeks, or the Pirates went and got swept by the Florida Marlins. Uh, and let's throw the Senators into this mix for a four-pack of teams they should beat. <laughs> you know, I keep emphasizing this point, and a lot of people want to say, 
and they're right that the Flyers went out there and had a terrible swing through the Western Conference where they won one of five games right. against these bad teams. The difference is they had a lot of time to recuperate from that. I think that was in November when they did it that. It was early December. in the season. They had when a they, long season They were struggling, streak, yes. So the Penguins don't have that luxury right now. So it's a fair point. And, you know, it's a fair point that people are making that the, the Capitals had a seven-game losing streak last year and still won the division. And the Penguins, I believe, uh, through this amount of games, have four more wins than they did a season ago. Right. I, I get all this, but they're playing badly now, and they need to stop the bleeding. And, and hopefully, like we said, the fact that the rest of the Metro isn't exactly hot aside from Philadelphia will help offset that. And they have head-to-head -head games. There's no better way to move up quickly than winning those head-to-head -head games. Let's go out to Kevin in East Liberty, who joins us right now on Pittsburgh CW. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Good. Uh, my first uh, question, my first thing was um, talking about uh, – Ben uh, and his injuries. I'm glad that he's back uh, healthy, and I know that um, he's going to have a great year. And I just hope and pray that that the Steelers will give a chance for uh, Ote oh, um, Brown to come back if he could come That's back. That's not going to happen. Forget about it. Although I did see a report. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for that. And I think Roethlisberger doesn't have to be great. He just has to be efficient, productive. You know making the passes down the field he has to make, reducing the interceptions. I think if you do that, you're going to win a lot more games than last year uh, because of this defense. But I saw a report today, Tim, where it looks like Tom Brady has been in touch with uh, Antonio Brown. Yeah. And would like to play with him. He's in touch with, with uh, Mike Vrabel, too. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that one. So he's at the Carrier Dome. I don't know if you caught right, this. I saw that when he's with uh, Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman. Because there's this, this uh, he's probably a friend of yours, a hot, you know, higher up crust friend like yours, Bob. Like no, country no, no. clubs, you know, rich and famous, whoever he is in Syracuse, he, he literally just buys these seats for rich and famous people to drag them to Onondaga County and go to games <laughs> in central New York. So he just bought these seats for Jimmy Fallon, Tom Brady, and Julian Edelman for Syracuse versus North Carolina, where there's no connection whatsoever. And there they are, courtside, and somebody three rows back is got a shot of Edelman's phone with Mike Vrabel's face on it, and the three of them are all talking together <laughs> on the phone. Gee, what do you think they're talking about? How North Carolina is going to bust Syracuse's 2-3? No, I don't think so. So you think that got the excitement ramped up in Nashville as to whether or not uh, Tom Brady's going to be the quarterback there? But if you're right about the reporters from ESPN that had the report Brown. today about yeah. Antonio Brown. Tom Brady's saying wherever he wants to go, he wants to take A.B. with him. If I'm Mike Vrabel, I'm thinking, oh. Geez, uh, maybe Ryan Tannehill yeah, ain't such I a bad also option. Saw Mike Vrabel ran out of some offense when he needed it down the field late in that uh, postseason run, which got the AFC Championship. Maybe, maybe he'll say, okay, fine, and, and cater a contract so that he's protected in case any shenanigans return. Oh, shenanigans? Well, you, they will return. I'm you just saying. You think Antonio you can, Brown on Broadway, ain't nothing bad's Antonio, gonna happen? Tom Brady must like him and wanted to play with him even after. You know, they released him in New England. It was Bob Kraft's decision. It wasn't Tom Brady's. I think Brady won. Bob, anyway, we'll uh, talk about it. We're due for a try. AB got along with Aaron Hernandez, too. So I know. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Tom Brady got along with Aaron Hernandez. Strange things happen. Guys yeah. have nine lives. Tri State Office Furniture tweet of the day. This comes to us from Jenna Lane from ESPN. And this is not actually news, but she put it out today. Not sure if this has been reported, which it has. League sources <laughs> have told me that the uh, Steelers are to tag Bud Dupree. Uh, that's something we've talked about for a long time. Thank you, Tim. You for bet. Phone. But that's our Tri-State Office Furniture tweet of the day. And, yes, Bud Dupree most likely will be tagged, which means the Steelers now would have to uh, go out and I don't know how they're going to find what they need in free agency if they're going to go there with uh, not all that much money available. We'll talk about it when we come back. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right here on Pittsburgh CW.